presentation of D4K on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. Galaxies are systems of stars, dust, and gas held together by gravity. Scientists study galaxies to find out more about the universe. Do you want to find out more about galaxies? We're here to answer your questions. Stay tuned. p for k is next. Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen. Welcome to D4K, the place for science. Before we go to your questions, let's learn a bit more about galaxies. We live on the planet Earth. At the center of our solar system is the sun. But the sun is just one star among the billions of stars in our home galaxy, the Milky Way. A galaxy is a collection of stars, planets, dust, and gas, all held together by gravity. Galaxies are so big, they are measured in light years. A light year is a distance like a travel in a year, or about 5.8 trillion miles. The Milky Way is between 100 and 130,000 light years in diameter. Our sun is about 25,000 light years from the center of the Milky Way. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy with arms of stars circling out of its center. Like ripples in a pond, the spiral arms are circling waves, with those waves causing new stars to form. Galaxies come in basically three different shapes. There are spiral galaxies like the Milky Way. Then there are elliptical galaxies, which are ball-shaped. The largest elliptical galaxies have trillions of stars. There are lenticular galaxies, galaxies that are shaped like a contact lens. And then there's a fourth type known as irregular galaxies, these galaxies don't have one kind of shape. They're often small with lots of newly formed stars and bright gas clouds where new stars form. Astronomers believe some irregular galaxies form when two galaxies bump and merge into each other. From Earth, we can see other galaxies with just our eyes, like Andromeda, which is about 2.5 million light years away, and the large and small Magellanic clouds, about 200,000 light years away. With the use of telescopes on Earth and the Hubble telescope in space, scientists have cataloged thousands of galaxies and are discovering more every day. The most distant known galaxy in the universe is about 13 billion light years away. The biggest galaxy is the IC1101 supergalaxy. It is 6 million light years across. That is 60 times larger than Milky Way. You'll find lots of things in a galaxy like clouds of dust and gas called nebulae, or quasars, objects that resemble stars but are much brighter. There are black holes, which are regions of space where a star or other mass has collapsed on itself and whose gravity stops anything, including light, from escaping. There's dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter doesn't give off any energy, but its gravity affects other things around it. And dark energy is a mysterious form of energy that makes up almost 75% of the universe. Galaxies give off different kinds of energy, so scientists have different ways of studying them. They can look at X-rays, gamma rays, ultraviolet radiation, and radio waves. And with more than 100 billion galaxies in the universe, there's lots more to discover. Joining me now to answer your questions about galaxies is Amber Strawn, a NASA research astrophysicist and the deputy project scientist for the James Webb Telescope Outreach. So, let's go to your questions. Hi, my name is Alex, and I go to Paramount Elementary. My question is, can other galaxies support human life? What a great question. So that's one of the biggest questions of our day, is, is there life out there? Um, I, nobody knows for sure. Uh, there are so many stars and so many galaxies. There are you know, something like 100 billion stars in, in our Milky Way, and there are about 100 billion other galaxies. And so, and, all, and so many of those stars have planets. So I personally think there probably is life out there. Uh, whether or not we'll ever find it, make contact with it, who knows? But it's a huge question and it's an important question. 
we do know that life is, um, it, it takes a lot of, of very special conditions for life to be able to develop on a planet like Earth. So it's not easy to get life, um, but there are so many stars and so many planets. I think that there's probably life out there. Hi, my name is Jack and I'm from McDonald Elementary in Moscow. And my question is, if you could go in space forever, what, what would you find out there? Wow, what a great question. <laughs> if you could go forever in space, well, right now we don't really know how big the universe is. So there, when you start thinking about the size of the universe, there are all these big questions left. Uh, we don't quite know how big it is. And so if you were to start traveling, you know, I don't know. Nobody really knows how far you would go. But uh, right now, what we do know is that humans have only ever been as far as the moon. Uh, and that was back, um, you know, back years ago. And so what NASA is trying to do now is figure out how to take that next step, how to get humans to be able to go out to the moon, out further from the moon, maybe out to an asteroid, and eventually someday to Mars. And the really exciting thing is that kids that are your age right now will be the ones to go to Mars. And so kids in middle school right now are right at that right age. If you want to start thinking about becoming an astronaut, someone in that time of, of schooling is going to be the first person to, to step foot on Mars. Hi, my name is Courtney, and I go to St. Mary's Elementary School in Moscow. My question is, how many stars can you see at night? Well, the number of stars you can see at night depend on where you live. If you live in a big city, then you won't be able to see as many because the glow from the lights outside kind of drown out a lot of the stars. But if you get a chance to drive out into the country where there aren't as many city lights, you can see many, many stars in the night sky. I grew up on a farm in Arkansas, and uh, where I grew up, there weren't a lot of big city lights. And so we could see thousands of stars in the night sky, and you could see the, the Milky Way galaxy, the center of the Milky Way um, in the night sky. So it depends on where you live. If you live in a big city, try to get your parents to take you out to the country so you can see the stars one clear night. Hi, my name is Caleb. I'm from Illinois, and my question is how many galaxies are out there? So astronomers actually don't know exactly how many galaxies there are. That's one of the big questions in astronomy. And that's why we need kids like you to go out and, and study astronomy and come work at NASA to figure out some of these questions. But astronomers think there are something like 100 billion other galaxies besides our Milky Way. Hi, I'm Iris from Cynthia Mann Elementary, and I'd like to know how scientists take pictures of our galaxies. What a great question. So you've probably learned that our galaxy is a spiral galaxy, um, but it would be really hard to get outside of our galaxy and take a picture to learn that, right? Well, and the answer is that we can't do that. You can't get outside the Milky Way to take a picture of it. So we've had to learn about the Milky Way galaxy through other means. Uh, so we study the stars in our Milky Way, and we can um, learn about how the stars are moving, and that helps us learn about our own Milky Way galaxy. But we can't ever take a picture of the Milky Way. It would, be, it would take too long to get outside of the Milky Way to, to turn around and take a picture. My name is Ethan, and I'm from Cynthia Mann Elementary. And my question is, what would happen if two of galaxies collided? So that's actually a really common thing that occurs in the universe, is when two galaxies collide. And what happens is you get a big galactic fireworks show when this happens between galaxies. Uh, so some of the things that happen, first of all, the galaxies would lose their shape. So if the two galaxies that started out were um, shaped like disks or like spiral galaxies, once they merge together, they lose all that shape and they would typically become like a ball-shaped galaxy, an elliptical galaxy. Um, also, we think that if those two galaxies had black holes lurking at their centers, uh, when these two galaxies collide, the black holes themselves might collide. So lots of crazy things happen when galaxies collide. My name is Sophie. I go to Riverstone Elementary, and my question is, what is past our galaxies? So galaxies uh, in the past were called island universes. So galaxies are kind of mostly sitting kind of by themselves out in space. So just beyond our Milky Way galaxy is mostly empty space. 
Now, most bigger galaxies like our Milky Way have little satellite galaxies, so smaller galaxies that are orbiting around them. Uh, mostly it's empty space out there, but there are also smaller galaxies, and then much further away there are bigger galaxies like our own Milky Way. Hi, my name is Antonio, and the school I go to is Lena Whitmore Elementary, and my town is Moscow, and my question is, how many wormholes are there known? So right now, wormholes are part of a, a field of physics called theoretical physics. So that's when we uh, think about and using math try to determine um, what the universe is like. Uh, we haven't ever discovered uh, observationally or with telescopes, we haven't discovered a wormhole. So we haven't seen one yet. Hi, I'm Laura. I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School and I would like to know how galaxies made. Well, a galaxy is a collection of stars, and so um, all the stars are, of course, made um, uh, individually, and they're born out of clouds of gas and dust. And so galaxies are made of stars, stars are born out of gas and dust clouds, and so the whole galaxy itself, um, are, they're born at all different times in the universe. Many of them were born billions of years ago, um, but we do see galaxies that are quite a bit younger than that today. Hi, my name is Michael and I go to McDonald Elementary in Moscow. My question is, how many miles away is the farthest known galaxy? So when we, when we talk about very distant galaxies, we, we measure them in terms of light years or how far light can travel in a year. Uh, the most distant galaxies that we've discovered are extremely far away. Most of these most distant galaxies that we've discovered have been discovered with the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble can see very far back into space, very far back into time. And these most distant galaxies that we've discovered are over 13 billion light years away. So we're starting to get a glimpse back to the, the very first galaxies that were born, but there's a big part of that space that we can't see yet. And that's why NASA is building big new telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope to, to view those early galaxies, to see those very first galaxies. Hi, my name is Annika and I go to Whitman Elementary in Lewiston. And my question is, how many planets are in our galaxy? How many planets are in our galaxy? That's a really great question. And the answer is we don't know. So we need people like you, kids like you, to learn about astronomy and go out there and try to figure that out. Uh, we know that there are a lot. Great NASA missions like Kepler have discovered many, many planets in our own Milky Way galaxy. And we now think that there are actually more planets than stars in the universe. So many planets, we don't know how many, but there are a lot. How far can you see on a clear day? Well, you can see more than 91 million miles, all the way to the sun. Amber, you're the deputy project scientist for the James Webb Telescope Outreach. So let's learn a bit more about this telescope. Construction is the premier telescope of the next decade. A next generation space telescope designed to cause yet another giant leap forward in our understanding of the cosmos. It will carry some of the most advanced technologies ever placed on an orbiting observatory. segments, 2.75 times the diameter of Hubble's primary mirror. Micro shutters, wavefront sensing and control subsystem, 12 by 18 meter, 5 layer captain based sun shield. The Webb Telescope, a revolutionary tool able to study every phase in the history of our universe. The Webb Telescope. What do you hope to see with this telescope and why is this project important? 
So the James Webb Space Telescope is the successor to Hubble. It'll be the biggest telescope that NASA has ever put into space. And it's so important because we're building it to answer these huge questions that Hubble can't answer. Everybody knows and loves Hubble. Uh, Hubble has completely revolutionized our understanding of the universe. But in some senses, we've pushed Hubble to its limits. And there are some things that it just can't answer. And we're building the Webb Telescope to answer these big questions. With Webb, we hope to see the very first galaxies that were born in the early universe completely open up that epic for us to see things that we've never seen before. We hope to learn how galaxies form and evolve over time. We hope to learn more about how stars are born. And we also hope to start learning a lot more about exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars outside of our own solar system. Thanks, Amber. OK, let's go back to your questions. Hi, my name is Kiana. I go to Sawtooth Middle School. And my question is, how many stars are in our galaxy? Our Milky Way galaxy has something like 100 billion stars, roughly. So many, many stars out there. A lot of them, like a lot of the stars are like our sun, and then there are other types of stars as well, both bigger and smaller. I'm Andrew. I'm from Cynthia Man Elementary. My question is, how old is the old, oldest galaxy? How old is the oldest galaxy? That's a great question. So we know that the universe is about 13.7 billion years old. And um, the first galaxies that were born were probably born pretty soon after the Big Bang. So the oldest galaxies that exist are probably somewhere around 13 billion years old. Hi, my name is McKenna, and I go to Russell Elementary School in Moscow. My question is, why are galaxies so far away? Well, galaxies are pretty much um, collections of stars, and they're distributed all throughout the universe. And some galaxies are close to our Milky Way. Um, the Milky Way has a couple of what are called satellite galaxies, so little tiny galaxies that are orbiting around the Milky Way. Um, and then other galaxies are further away. So, some, so galaxies are kind of all over the place when it comes to space. Some are close, some are far, uh, some are very far away. Hi, my name is Finn. I go to McDonald Elementary School in Moscow. How did Jupiter form? How did Jupiter form? That's a good question. So Jupiter and all the planets that are orbiting our sun uh, formed way back when the, shortly after the sun itself was formed. Um, that was about four and a half billion years ago. And what we know is that there was a big cloud of gas and dust and that the center of that cloud of gas and dust that was rotating formed the sun. And then out of the rest of the gas and dust that was in that big disk, the planets formed. Hi, my name is Zach. I go to the school Andrews Elementary. I want to know how galaxies spin. So we know that uh, some galaxies, especially spiral galaxies, uh, definitely have a very ordered spin, a way that they rotate. And we can observe this with telescopes. And the reason galaxies rotate are basically because of how they were born. So when uh, the galaxies, the stars inside the galaxies themselves were born in the early universe, um, they had some initial spin to them. And that spin just keeps up over time for normal galaxies. Now occasionally something that happens in the universe is that two galaxies will get close to each other and will interact. And if two galaxies smash together in a big galactic collision, that can mess up the rotation. And so what results after a big galaxy collision is a galaxy that doesn't have that ordered spin like you would see in a spiral galaxy. My name is Taylor and I go to Cynthia Man Elementary School. My question is, why is our galaxy named the Milky Way? So our galaxy is named the Milky Way because of how it looks to people on Earth. So if you ever go outside on a really dark night when you're far away from the city and you look up in the sky, you can see lots of little tiny individual stars. But what you'll also see is a band across the sky that looks milky. And what that band is, is the Milky Way galaxy. We're looking through the center of it. And uh, that milky appearance of all of those stars is what gave the Milky Way its name. Hi, my name is Reed and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary. And my question is, why are most galaxies colorful? 
So galaxies are big collections of stars, and we know that stars are very colorful. So stars have come in all different colors, from bright white to blue down to red. And so because galaxies are just big collections of stars, uh, galaxies themselves are very colorful as well. Hi, my name is Daniel, and I go to Maranatha Christian School in Boise. My question is, how come when a star goes out, it causes a supernova? So the way a star ends its life, um, a lot depends on how the star is born. So the mass of a star, how big a star is when it's born, determines how that star will end its life. Stars that are much bigger than our sun uh, will end their lives as supernovae. And a supernova um, basically is when the star sheds its outer layers in a huge explosion and um, can leave behind a white dwarf star. Hi, I'm Jared, and I go to Andrews Elementary. My question is, what is the second closest galaxy to us? Well, a lot of that, the answer to that depends on how you define a galaxy. So the closest big galaxy to the Milky Way is the Andromeda Galaxy. And the Andromeda Galaxy is a lot like the Milky Way in, in its shape. It's shaped like a disk in a spiral. It has spiral arms in it. Uh, but actually closer than the Andromeda Galaxy are um, some satellite galaxies to the Milky Way. So those are called the Small and the Large Magellanic Clouds. Those are tiny little galaxies that orbit the Milky Way galaxies. So those are, are really the closest small galaxies. Hi, my name is Tyler from Cynthia Man Elementary. My question is how fast does a rocket go in space? Wow, that's a good question. So how fast a rocket goes in space depends on a lot of things. It depends on how much fuel you have in the rocket and how much, um, how much power you get once you launch the rocket. So it, it really depends on, on how fast the rocket gets started. Hi, my name is Sasha and I go to Maranatha Christian School and my question is why doesn't the Halley's Comet ever burn out? So comets are basically bodies of, of um, ice and, and dust and dirt that orbit the sun. And uh, they, they have different orbit times. So they come, swing around the sun, and then go way out into the outer solar system and then swing back around. Uh, when, they, when they swing around, of course, the, what causes them to glow is the sun, and that burns them up. Um, but uh, some comets will eventually uh, burn up and won't come back around. Hi, my name is Henry. I'm from Cynthia Mann Elementary School. Well, my question is, is it true there's a black hole in the middle of our galaxy? Uh, we have pretty good evidence that there probably is a big black hole at the center of our galaxy. So we, um, there's a lot of different ways we can observe that. One of the ways is that we can look at what the stars at the center of our Milky Way are doing. And they seem to be rotating around something that's got to be very, very big. And so we think that that big thing at the center of the galaxy is a big, huge black hole. Hi, my name is Nicola. I go to school at Preston's Elementary, Ar Arlington, Virginia, and my question is, do all galaxies have a sun in the center? That's a good question. So um, galaxies, again, come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, all, all galaxies are made of stars, so that's what galaxies are, are collections of stars. And uh, the sun is, of course, our star in our solar system, the, the star that the Earth orbits around. Um, so the Milky Way has about something like 100 billion stars. Um, some are like our sun, some are bigger, some are smaller. Um, but most big, big galaxies like our Milky Way, uh, we think most big galaxies like that have a black hole, a huge black hole at their center. Amber, before we run out of time, why did you decide to become an astrophysicist? Well, I grew up on a farm in Arkansas, and so I was really far away from any city lights, and the skies were beautiful at night. So from a very young age, I was outside at night looking at the stars and starting to ask questions like, where do we come from, and what's out there, and how do we get here, and how, do, how does the universe work? And so I was really interested in astronomy from a very young age. And so when I got into school, I just took all the math and science classes I could and um, went on my way to, to become an astronomer at NASA. And so if someone wants to do this as a living, if someone's out there and thinks that they want to become an astrophysicist, what should they study? 
Well, you should take all of the math and science classes you can while you're in school. Um, you should definitely plan on going to college because to be an astrophysicist, you'll need a college degree. Um, and I would also recommend um, it, once you get a little bit older, get into high school and college, uh, take as many extra opportunities as you can. Take summer internships, um, work, uh, work at a lab somewhere um, during the summers, those kind of things. And find mentors, find people that are also excited about what you want to do with your career and with your life that will help you along the way. Thank you, Amber, but I'm sorry we've run out of time. Thank you for answering students' questions today. My pleasure. It's been great. You can learn lots more about galaxies and other scientific topics on the D4K website. We'll answer more questions about galaxies on the D4K web only. And every week, check out my science blog for the latest science news for kids. You'll find it all at idahoptv.org slash D4K. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on D4K. Hey, do you have a science question? Do you want to win some prizes? Yeah! When you send us a question to use on D4K, you and your class are eligible to win DVDs and other prizes. Check out the D4K website for this season's topics and send in your question. You can send it as an email or as a video question, recorded on your webcam or cell phone. And if you're an educator, we'll even lend you a camera. Find out all the details on how to send your questions in and how to win on the D4K website. That's idahoptv.org slash D4K. D4K, the place for science. Presentation of D4K on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. If you want to learn more about this topic or watch our videos, check out the D4K website at idahoptv.org slash D4K.